I'm Cheryl and welcome to my sewing room. I'm going to demonstrate how to make a Christmas tree bulb ornament. Now this ornament is not only a great project for adults learning how to sew, but it's also great to get your children involved. So it's a family project so they can learn how to sew also. So let's take a look at the ornament. Okay, now you have a lot of different options for making this. This is only just a few that I'm going to show you in this video. This is an opportunity for you and your kids to get very creative. So let me set this aside and show you how to make your template. Okay, so what you want to do is draw a circle that's five and a half inches in diameter. So no matter which size you decide to make your circle, always allow a half inch for seam allowance. Now up here at the top, this part here, you're going to draw two lines that are one and a quarter inches high and one line up here to connect them that is one and a half inches wide. When you're done, this is going to be about a one inch size square up here. After you've got it all drawn on your cardstock, and I recommend you use cardstock and not paper. By the way, one of my viewers said she uses cereal box cardstock, and that's also a great option. So go ahead, then cut it out on those drawn lines. Now, when you're done, you've got two templates here. One of these is you can use for just any fabric. There's no specific design on it that you're trying to capture to be in your ornament. This one here is known as a fussy cut ornament, or, or excuse me, template. So you can capture certain designs. So let me give you an example of what I mean by that. Here is some fabric that's got Christmas trees all over it. And I want to put this one in the center of my ornament. So take your fussy cut template and center it. Try to get equal amounts of fabric around the edges of the tree and then go ahead and draw around all of the edges of the template and then go ahead and cut it out. So that's what a fussy cut is. Now, here is some fabric that I'm using and it's got a, a little bit of a, a green design on it. There's different shades of uh, green in it and it's got little fine glitter all over it. And during the Christmas holiday season, usually in late September, you will start to see fabrics like this appearing in fabric stores. It's really pretty and perfect for Christmas ornaments and other decorations. So cut out, so get two squares that are larger than your template, okay? Bring them front sides together, then lay your template down and draw around the edges of your template. Now before you separate these two pieces, Take straight pins and put them on the inside of the drawn line around all of the edges. Then take your scissors and go ahead and cut on that drawn line. All right? Now, if you want to put trim on it, here are some suggestions on how to go do that. I have just one strip of ribbon across there and you can actually do more than that if you want. Think about putting some rickrack over the edges of that trim on both sides. That's one option. Or you can push the trim out just a little bit and leave space putting three separate rows of trim on there. Once you determine your trim on one piece and you've got it stitched on, before you do it on the second side, take your fussy cut template, okay, and then put little marks, and I recommend you use a pencil, and put little marks on the top and the bottom where the ribbon is. Mark it on your template, and do the same thing on this side. Then, before you stitch on the trim on the other one, Go ahead, place your template 
on there and shift it to where the two lines you want them so that it what it does is it lines up this ribbon with the other side so that they will match okay then before you close it up take your ribbon and this is quarter inch ribbon and my piece is about six and a half seven inches long fold it in half and pin it on one side up at the top then you're going to close it up bring front sides together of your fabric line up your ribbons line it up up here at the top and pin it around the edges now this is how i suggest you do your pins place it like this because as you're stitching it's easy to pull out the pins when they're placed like this i usually put one stitch on one side where I want to, excuse me, one pin on one side where I want to start. And then because I want to leave a two and a half inch opening, I leave two pins on the other side. That's so that I won't forget and stitch right over that opening, which I have done on occasion, okay? So after you've got all your edges pinned, do a few stitches back and forth at that first pin so that you secure this uh, section right here then you're going to do a one quarter inch seam so from this raw edge come over in one quarter inch now if you've never stitched on a curve before you want to move your fabric slow as you go through the sewing machine so that you can get a nice smooth rounded edge now when you come up here to your first corner you're going to leave that needle down and you're going to come in from this raw edge one quarter inch and that's about three stitches come in then leave your needle down lift up your presser foot and then do a sharp turn and then continue stitching then when you get one quarter inch away from this raw edge stop leave your needle down lift up your presser foot and do another sharp turn and then continue on around the next two edges two corners I mean now when you get around to this last side you get up to the two pins do a few stitches back and forth to secure this area now before you turn it right side out you need to do a few clips on the corners so on the two inside corners you're going to cut from this point right here in towards your stitched corner but don't cut in too close because you don't want to stitch your thread and you don't want to also cut too close because then all of your other th uh, fabric thread will start to unravel so cut straight in like that then come over here to the side cut in then come over here and cut in and when you're done you're going to see this little pie shape that's what you're doing you're cutting this little pie shape out now on your other two corners you'll see some drawn lines here you want to first do a cut right there then come over here to this side and cut in towards that cut line and then come over here and cut in towards the cut line again don't cut too close you want to leave a little bit of fabric so that it looks like this see I've got just a little bit of fabric there one more cutting that you need to do because it's you've got these rounded edges and if we don't do some little slit clipping it's not going to lay very smooth so what you want to do is first look at my little diagram here here's my stitch line and you're going to take your scissors and you're going to cut in around all of the edges from the raw edge in but again don't get so close that you cut your threads so you just take your scissors and preferably a small piece of small scissors with a fine sharp point and you just cut in like that okay all around the curved edges then go ahead and reach in this opening beginning to pull it right side out and what you want to do I recommend is you reach up in there and grab your little ribbon loop 
and that'll help get it started for turning it right side out. Okay, so now you want to close up your opening and what I usually do is before I try to close it up I'm going to fold these edges in a quarter of an inch and just finger press real hard so that you uh, form a crease there, a little folded area, and do that on both sides of the opening. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take your polyfill, and it looks like this. You're going to take just little small clumps and you're going to fill in, oops, I forgot to tell you one step, this is important. Before you fill it in, you want to poke these corners out a little bit with something pointed. Now don't poke too hard because you'll go right through that opening. Then, if you still can't get it to come out very well, take a straight pin and just tug at the corners a little bit to help get them cut out. All right, so now that you got that done, let's go back to the polyfill. Take little pieces, and you're gonna go inside, and the first area you wanna fill in is up here at the top. The reason why you want little pieces when trying to fill this in is that you get better results. So push this all the way in as much as you can. Then you'll probably need another small clump to push in there. Once you've got it, filled up in here. Then begin filling out the other upper portion until you get it all the way filled down here. Okay, and remember, don't forget to put little fold lines on your fabric opening. So I'm gonna show you how to close it up by using a slip stitch, all right? So here's my little diagram. This is, the red line is the fabric fold on each side of the opening. And the dark line is your thread. Okay, now this is oversized, these stitches. I just wanted you to be able to see what you should be doing. You're gonna use a single strand of thread and a needle. Put a knot at the end of your thread. Then go up underneath this fold line, starting at one end of the opening. Go underneath. Pull your needle out and your thread all the way through till it gets to that knot at the end. Then go over here to the other side. Stick your needle into the fold line. Then go over less than an eighth of an inch and pull it out again, pulling the thread all the way through. Then come back over here and do that again. Stick the needle in the fold line, come over just a little bit and then pull the needle and thread through. As you complete each stitch, pull the thread so that it brings this opening closed. Let me show you here on my sample. Let me pull it apart. Okay, so can you, I hope you can see the thread here. But I started down here, stuck the needle in underneath the fold line, and went, pulled it all the way out and went over here. Now, to show you what I mean by stay underneath the fold line, I'm gonna open this up, and there you can see the stitches, the thread, right underneath that fold line. So that's what I mean by stay under the fold line. And you're gonna keep just going back and forth, and don't forget to tug on this thread as you stitch so it closes up that opening. Okay? All right, so now you know how to do a slip stitch. Now, if you want to use multiple pieces of fabric on here, like I've used this red with metallic stars, and again, this green with the glitter. I just love this green fabric. I made a table runner out of this for my daughter last year. She just loved it. So anyway, I t take your two strips. I recommend two inch wide strips stitch them together one quarter inch then press the seam on the back side continue stitching your strips together I recommend uh, four or five strips so that you want to remember you want it larger than your template then if you want to put trim on this particular one I recommend you press these seams open 
Okay, see I've got both seams pressed open. Then on the front, you can take your trim and lay it across there. Then stitch right down the middle on there and use matching thread, okay? And just place it right over your seam and you can do it on both of them. Or if you wanna just stitch something down the middle right there, okay? So do that on both pieces. Now, so that you have your front and back matching, again, place that fussy cut template on there. Center your design the way you want it. Once you've got it um, centered, take a, a pencil and put your little marks at each side of the center piece there. So that when you go to cut, cut out your next one, the one for the back, they will match. And again, you need to cut two of these. Now, if you want to make one that's like this with a little square in the center, let me show you how I did that. Real easy. All you need, I'm going to put the measurements right there, is you're going to need take a two and a half inch square, then take two pieces that are two and a half inches by three and a half inches and put them on opposite sides of the square and do a quarter inch seam. Then press the seams on the back side and then press both seams on top, pushing these seams towards the red strips. Then you're going to take your other two strips and put them on these two edges. So it'll look like this. Again, you just put them on there, stitch one quarter inch seam on both sides, press the back side, then open it up, press on top, pushing your seams towards the red side. Okay, now you can leave it just like this if you want and then cut out your template. And I, I recommend you use the fussy cut template Center it, go ahead, trace around it, and then cut it out. Now, if you want trim on that design, you can take your trim and again, lay it right over the seam and begin stitching it. And then when you get to the corner, all you need to do is leave your needle down and hold it like this, and this stuff will go around really easily in that corner. It's, it's very bendable, okay? And just continue all the way around. Now, some other suggestions for these ornaments is to use some craft jewels like this. You can take them and use either craft glue or a hot glue gun and begin placing them in the center. See how pretty that would be if you did that. And I, they come in large containers. There's all different shapes in there. So that's another suggestion. Your kids will have so much fun doing these. Now, if you're interested in doing other ornaments, here are some Christmas tree ornaments. And the uh, tutorial on this is appearing right about now in the upper right hand corner. You can click on that link and view this uh, video. And I think your kids will find this one a lot of fun too. Well, I hope you decide to take this project on. I hope you get your family involved. They're gonna really have a good time. Now to, to keep informed on all my future videos, click on one of my subscribe buttons. There's one down there in the lower right hand corner. It's red, it says subscribe. I'm Cheryl and I'm so glad you came to my sewing room. I'll see you next time and happy sewing. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, would you please click on the thumbs up button and don't forget to click on share to share this video with your friends. If you haven't subscribed yet, click on that red subscribe button down there in the lower right hand corner of your screen. And don't forget to click on the bell and enter your email address so you receive email notifications about my latest video. I'm Cheryl and this is Manny. See you next time and happy sewing!